but the information that is patented in order to build young people, to build young generations of this country. And uh, I believe that you have made your mark and I believe you are going to continue making your mark within that space. You have carried us from a journey where you were saying we must set our own goals and now you are saying we must believe in ourselves. And I believe uh, that the next one that is coming is you are giving us a power of staying, how to stay because now you have made us to set up these goals through the knowledge that you have shared with us. And you have now said we must believe in us, ourselves. How do we set a path and go forward? And we are looking forward to the next engagement. Congratulations. Yo, tetemba um, so, um, I've been asked to speak on, 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 on lessons um, to teach others, and the overarching topic there was um, active citizenry. And I think, and I think it's, it's important to firstly understand what does it mean being an active citizen. And when I was thinking about it, look, it's, it's simple as to say, Uba, it's members of society who take charge of their future and are the agents of what they want to see happen in their community. Just, that's just it. So that make, this definition makes it clear, Uba, anyone can do it. You don't have to you know, have anything, but as long as you want to make a change in society, then you, you, you can be one. Um, because democracies need active, informed, and responsible citizens. Citizens who are willing to take responsibility for themselves and for their communities. Because we know but we need a racial social change with committed social development agents who have a clear agenda of what is meant by social cohesion. Um, we need to have active citizens who are interested in, in the development of their communities and the black child and are able to assist in meaningful societal change through active engagements at schools, workplaces. So in the BMF, we started um, this campaign of, of, of people who wanted to develop, and people said, we don't know where to start. Um, if, if I want to make a change in my society, where would I start? And we were like, go approach your local school go volunteer to serve in the school governing body, you know, um, you will make a difference there definitely and that's you, where will you start and build your profile and will be seen and then you can, you can move to, to bigger places. Another important aspect for me on active citizenship is that communities need to be informed about what's happening in the communities and in the world at large. So that for me says, you know, don't shy away from sparking a conversation and, and getting into debates about things because you never know um, how big that can blow or what impact that can have um, on others around you. <clears throat> so, but, but also, um, it's important to develop an internal, lo internal local of control um, because if you do that, um, you, you then know why you are responsible for your own success. You don't blame others and, and feel uba lo you. <laughs> but basically, you, you, you must be responsible for what happens to you. And, 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 and if you do that, then you'll have an attitude of responsibility and believe that your choices and behavior influence the outcome of, of what becomes of you. And in Doc's words, um, you know, you believe in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your abilities. Another important point in closing is self-efficacy, and that talks to um, an individual's belief in your own capacities and to execute behaviors that are necessary to produce um, specific performance attainments. It, it reflects confidence in your ability to exert control of your own motivation and your own behavior, you know, and social environment. And as much as, you know, we'd advocate for having mentors, but it needs to come from within. You need to be able to know what, how to motivate yourself and, and, and what makes you happy and what makes you grow and, and most importantly, where you want, where you want to be. Okay. Uh, 
I don't know. At some point, I feel like I got the most difficult topic. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Zuma's topic was supposed to be mine. <laughs> and some Indians, that's industry of sharing knowledge. So empathy on black tax. First, I want to make this note. It is a very sensitive, sensitive uh, topic. So I will treat carefully. Everything I'm gonna say here is from my personal experience, my understanding. I'm not talking on the topic as an expert or a professor. Uh, may that be understood. So, on the topic of black tax, uh, I came across it. First, I spoke, I had a speech about uh, the topic in 2014. Uh, surprisingly, I was invited by BMF, student chapter at the University of uh, Johannesburg. I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a messy speech. And then from there, I vowed to myself that I will never, never uh, accept any invitation to speak, especially from any university. Because the questions after that, uh, I always have got a problem with big English. So when they ask me questions, they were simple questions, but uh, the construction of, 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 of the language, the English, I felt like I needed a dictionary, you see. So everything that I'm doing, I'm the first one. We can say more like I'm the first one in my family who broke the chain. Uh, I can say a generational case. When I was growing up, when I was uh, going to primary and high school, uh, my family was classified as like the least uh, on the block. So. I'm the first one to do everything. If I can use the way to be where I am, I'm, tr I'm trying to avoid the word successful because I don't think I'm there yet. So, number one, the first, a car with no debt. Uh, I'm the first person in my family to have a house in the most exclusive suburb in Poloko, and the first was in Midrand. So with the business, like Dr. Zuma, I never worked for any company. I tried, uh, I tried to work for other companies, not to say, no, I was never fired, I was never fired. I was so good at my job that uh, I don't know how many written verbal warnings I would get, but they'll never fire me. Even when I would be off from work, they'll still call me to come and then assist, uh, mostly to do with sailing. So, Whatever we do, or whatever you do in terms of assisting your siblings, uh, normally it's financial, we know. And then when you are there from the family, they see you as that person that you are successful. You have got uh, the finances to assist them. And then so you volunteer to take your sister, your brother to the university. Doing that, I believe they should be disciplined. Sit down with the person. I'm taking you to university or college. You're going to study for three years. After that, you must get a job, and then we are done. And then from the family, I help you, then we can help others. So I don't have to help you, and then I'll help the, uh, our younger seed, and so on and so on. So there is a book by Nick Mutlongo on black text and other amazing contributing uh, writers. So I would say in, in, uh, as point of reference to go and read that book, they making valid reasons on the issue. From my side, I've got one problem with the term, uh, black tax. Uh, I've got a serious, serious issue with, with the terminology of it. Uh, I don't know how they came to call it black tax because uh, the more you embed the terminology in your mind, you feel like, uh, there's something, psychologically, it's just like there's something wrong you're doing because of the team, and there's nothing wrong you're doing. Something will only be wrong if there's no discipline. Financial-wise, uh, especially as a black community, we need to have that kind of discipline. That's the only way we can get an understanding of what is happening from my side financial and with whoever I'm, hel I'm helping from uh, the family. So first, discipline. If you say, I want to assist uh, my brother or my sister, let there be discipline. Empathy, you're not doing it because you feel sore for them. So you're trying to as well to break 
the chain so that it's not only you. In that way, it's part of the legacy within the family. And I think I'm done with that. Thank you so much. Um, and congratulations to you, Dr. Mtembu, on this uh, milestone. And uh, it is quite obvious by the momentum you have that it is one of many uh, to come. I want to uh, first start with a, a marketing pitch for the publisher. Uh, he done so well uh, when he was marketing the book that you know, Ubuse Kawen, Uvmoy, Ugubanjo Moy, Kengo Gubendi Selba, Timamele Lengo in Yana Kumba. <laughs> so I just want to uh, congratulate also the publisher for uh, the passion that you're putting into Dr. Mtembu's life because uh, what you are doing is building a generation around him. When you speak to him now, the only word that comes out of his mouth is Caleb, uh, the latest addition to the family. But the point I'm making is that all the books that are my books and CDs on the table, I humbly want to ask the publisher that all the proceeds will be split between the publishing company and Dr. Mtembu's foundation. I won't take them away and I won't take anything uh, from them <laughs> as well. I do understand, Dr. Mtembu, that we've got two bites. So my two topics and my first bite, the topic uh, is, is going to be context, uh, context relating to the subject you gave me, and the second bite will be the fountain of validation. When I start with the first bite, speaking about context, I wish to tell a story that you're not always going to be in a good place even if you are doing okay, you will reach a dark corner. You will go through mist. You will go through turbulence. But what matters is your understanding of that context and ensure that how you pull through The battery, it's flashing, so the battery is gone down. Yeah, I'm going to be sending you a call on Monday. As Monday. It is never the problem you face. It is always your response to the problem that matters. Bad things happen to good people as well. So it is no value to you to sit and mope and say, why me, Lord, if you know that song? When you should be saying, why not me? And then put on your armor of resilience to ensure that when you get up, you get up with the grasshopper momentum. The second part of context, always know who you are, when you are, where you are. I'll tell you a short story in the last few seconds I have. I once walked into a mayor's office and I asked the PA, Sisi, if you don't understand Kosa, quit has someone next to you to help you. I clearly could see visually that the person I was speaking to was probably half my age. So I still invoked a sense of respect and said, Sisi, 
She said, and Jingu Siswako. That you, Tilko. Titi nige. Wati Tingu Mama. I then sent a text to that mayor and I asked him, I have upset your PA and I apologize. When I was done and I was walking through this institution, I got to someone I know and I said, Hey, Ndimoshi Lepapra. Yeah, that is Sisigula Mama. What is I? Uma mumfundi singe kawa lamdu. Please understand when you are Uma mumfundi and when you are Usisi. And when you are umetem, to stretch their hands out to you and not be confronted by the desire to be abusive because of the way you treated them at the time when things were okay for you. It will never always be okay. But it is okay not to be okay. And when you start becoming okay, understand your responsibility to be okay. Very briefly. Because Nebonba is on Kaga go round two. There are some do's and don'ts. My publisher, send it to the very briefly, Dr. Mtembu, without taking from the momentum, when life has a formula, and if you follow that formula and follow the do's and don'ts that you will design, there's no one that can design a formula for you. Because you design your own do's and don'ts because you will be influenced by who you are, where you're from, what's hurt you, what's worked for you, what's upset you, those around you, your education, and everything else that contributes to who you are. I sat with Dr. Mtembu and a few others in 2008 in Buffalo City, looking out the window and we said, Sineng Hak. And then we sat and I learned from him. Never ever think that you learn only from people that you are supposedly more advanced than. Every human being has the ability to teach you something. We sat there at a dark moment, very dark moment, and we gave each other advice on how to handle that situation. And the other day I was saying to him, do you remember where you come from? And those dark days, because when it's going well, you are equipped to manage when the next dark day comes because it's going to come. And it'll be quicker, it'll be swifter, and it'll be easier. Don't. Never say it will not work. Never take credit for what you did not do. Never embarrass others, even if they are wrong. Never pass the blame. Never stay quiet and assume things when you are not sure about what is happening around you. Never say something about someone else that you are not willing to say to their face. Do not seek personal benefit in everything and in everything you do. Recognize opportunity, but do not be an opportunist. Never want anything at all cost. And be prepared to do anything to get it, as you will lose everything when you do. Never undermine others. Treat people with respect. Do not dominate every situation you find yourself in. The do's, be yourself. Know when to walk away. 
Keep your eye on the big picture. Have a culture and embrace diversity. Inspire others. Live a balanced life. Give more than you receive. Use your common sense. It's open and buoy. Well, it's always risky to be at the tail end because everyone has said what they've wanted to say. But fortunately, the topic is different for me. I want to begin by congratulating Dr. Mtembu, Beggy, as we call him. Although I don't have a PhD either, I am qualified to call him Beggy. Sempo, congratulations to you too and your publishing company for your second book with the same author. I think you must have identified something good in him to, to take him on for a second time. So congratulations to both of you. I'm also a Fortarian. So, yes, yeah, my last degree I did with the University of Forte in 2009. A disclaimer before I begin. This is not a legal opinion of any sorts, so you may not quote me on anything I'm about to say after this. There is, I heard earlier on someone saying that we have doctors in the house and therefore we must sound like doctors. There seems to be a misconception about lawyers too. And lawyers think that for them to be distinguished as lawyers, they must speak like lawyers. As a teacher of law as well, I have uh, studied on the topic of simple language usage in the legal profession, which is a movement that was started in the United States of America in the early 30s and 40s, because they realized that most disputes that arise mainly from written documents are caused by the way that the lawyers have written those documents because the interpretation is difficult, if not impossible, of that document, more especially when you are dealing with wills. The persons, the testator, who drafted those documents are often six feet underground and are not there to express their intentions at the time when the lawyer drafted the document on their behalf. But coming back to the topic and out of behavior, whether it is in a romantic relationship, a family relationship, an employment relationship, there are certain rules that have to be adhered to. In a family setup, for instance, you cannot merely step up to one of your siblings and slap them across the face. It's frowned upon is what makes it wrong. Our laws, we know what was known or still is known as the Ten Commandments in the Bible. Those come from what we call common law, which is the unwritten law, and has in most cases developed into written law. We have what we call customary law as well. And the interaction between employers and employees is also governed by by legal imperatives, by laws. And in all relationships, you will need to engage with stakeholders outside of your normal relationship. In the employment system, to come in to come and fix the problem at hand. That is a stakeholder. And there are certain rules that have to be followed. We refer to them as legal imperatives. We have to adhere to the rules that govern us and remind ourselves, stakeholders come in. But make sure that you network with the correct stakeholders. You can't just go out and grab the first person that you meet by the hand and say, come in and solve my problem. If you need a plumber, and the person that you need is not a plumber, you are not going to fix the problem that you are facing. So it's important that you get the correct stakeholders on board. And that is my two cents, my one bite. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.
Uh, thank you very much. I think we've heard uh, on your first bites. Uh, the, the intention was obvious to get the highlights as, as the opening, and unfortunately, it will come to the close so that we, when the load shedding second phase of it comes, we finish with our second phase. I, I'm not sure, Doc, you, you want to start and probably just wrap it up in terms of the information sharing, then the chairperson of the BMF. The a woman, as a man in this country, in the continent, we need to start looking into where do we find ourselves and where do we fit in. Uh, I am uh, uh, honored uh, to be part of a partnership between DTIC and the German government, which uh, we are going on the management training program to Germany in June. And they were asking me, so what do you want to get in Germany? Uh, do you want to sell your services there? I said, no. I want to come back with new strategies, MMC, on how to deal with our water challenges because that's an area of my speciality. So the information sharing that we are dealing with eventually needs to lead to us uh, finding a space where do you cement yourself and what role do you have to play? Lastly, uh, yesterday I was reviewing a paper by one of my students. He is just graduating with a master's degree. I only supervise masters and PhDs uh, because I don't have time. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and he had done a simple study during a hard lockdown to look into the changes in water consumptions at the household level. How did COVID and us being locked into the houses influence the water situation? So that when we have another disaster, now we have better tools, better policies that are informed by information on how to respond to those difficulties. So you might look at it as simple that they were measuring, taking a bucket and looking into how much, uh, how many toilet flushes did you make in a day? How many baths did a person make? Uh, but the information itself, it becomes part of a disaster management tool for the nearby future. Find your cementing into where we exist in Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, my closing remarks talk um, around mentorship. And because in Petum Botum Kulu, Apepundwin, maybe I must say that the BMF does have a program where we place um, the mentors for our our members. So if you're interested um, in, in, in having a mentor um, and you would know that our past presidents are the likes of Bonang Mohale, Eric Mafuna, so um, I mean we've got the cream of the crop. But close to home, um, when I talk about um, mentors and role, and role models, I want to say about the youth of, 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 of today is most vulnerable and is faced with a lot of challenges, um, unemployment and, and, and substance abuse. So Tina, um, we need to extend a helping hand to our young people, be it on a career professional route or in the entrepreneurship space. And those who are in business um, should help the upcoming entrepreneurs um, so that they don't make the same mistakes that they have made and so that they can learn from them. Because although entrepreneurship is encouraged, very little effort in, is put in terms of supporting those who take this very lonely, if I can say, and demanding route. So for my closing statement would be that let's, let's really consider mentorship, let's really coach, and, 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 and being a mentor it doesn't have to be, you're not going to take out books, it doesn't have to be, it's not difficult at all, you just start, you know, um, with, with simple basic things of empowering um, the, 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 the next generation. Um, so maybe let me do my pledge as well. <laughs> I will be purchasing 10 books um, to distribute to my provincial executive. Thanks for the pledge, uh, Madam Chair. So, in closing, first, Dr. Mtembu, next time, if we are to have a panel, I'm choosing my own topic. I'm choosing my own topic. Yeah. But in closing, uh, from 
our side as Empo publishers, if you have realized uh, those banners, there are three logos there. So there are other two companies. Uh, I've got the other company, Empo Consulting, where we specialize in uh, private clients. And then we provide as well training programs. I was telling Dr. Mtembu today as we were driving by Saturday, I said my first time when uh, I was in East London or Eastern Cape, I was doing a three days program by the hotel, the Madison Hotel and Conference. So, back on that topic, which I, I don't really like, black tax, I'm just gonna revise what I said in terms of discipline as uh, Dr. Shapley was reading out. Without that ability of discipline, uh, nothing will work out. We need discipline in every area or every category of our lives, be personal development, uh, running a business or finance management. We all need discipline so that we can have a clear way where we are going, setting goals, and everything that is related to now, when it comes to the youngsters, uh, those who look at us and say, this, Dr. Mtembo is my role model, we need to focus there. Uh, as a BMF, some of the programs that we were just highlighting, uh, I understand it might be an organization or a group of doctors and lawyers. Uh, some of the pro programs we need to focus on young people. It would be great to focus on two subjects when it comes to our youngsters, especially the black community. Number one being uh, reading, knowledge. We've got a problem of uh, a problem as a whole country of literacy. Uh, going to school, studying your textbooks, that's not more like reading. From myself, I'm here because of self-education. Yeah, because of self-education, that's why I'm here. And then I keep on developing myself. So the second subject will be finance. If you, we tell our youth to save with no teaching them anything, they need to learn about investments. They need to learn what's a trust fund. And all those related topics. I think that's where we can cap uh, on, the, on empathy for black techs. Thank you. Thank you so much, and um, to my esteemed panel, uh, my fellow panelists. In closing, I, uh, on the second bite, wanted to share a poem in the context of uh, speaking about the fountain of validation. My topic given is when it goes wrong. Now, when it goes wrong, those you need most will run away the fastest. We always look and say, oh, Puban Ban, they won't take your calls, they won't meet with you, don't be a crybaby and look for validation from sources that are not going to give it to you. What you're going to get is a roller coaster of misery and happiness all in one because but there is one fountain of validation that always works and that's to look up to the heavens and ask the creator the universe and our ancestors to intercede and they hear voice by speaking to them. You will be able to resolve and I won't need those I think I need. Because when you come back from that fall, 
There'll be new people, grasshopper, that will go forward with you. Because those that were there when you fell, you don't need them anymore. Because you have leaped four times ahead of where you were. I want you to listen to this poem in closing with an analytic mind. Footsteps and shoes. I wear the oversized shoes of my ancestors who hold expectations of me going further, doing better, and reaching the mountain top. I wear thick socks and tie the shoelaces tight so that the shoes on my feet, knowing that I do not hold the experience or wisdom of the generations that hold the expectation. I step forward, qualifies as progress, even when the shoe lands up in a puddle of mud. I suddenly regret the step and make the mistake of stepping back, leaving me with two steps to take and regain my confidence and keep the forward march. On a good day that could last a few months or years, my progress is represented by many steps. I acknowledge my contribution to my past and continue to manufacture the future that at times dismisses generational mistakes and wipes away generational curses. I know the creator has the master plan, yet it's my footsteps that will fill the cup. The world keeps changing, taking my focus away, the expectations of the heavens, and reducing my interaction with warm bodies that could make things clearer. Going it alone, I maintain a balance between meditation, prayer, action, and celebration of milestones. As I walk through many milestones, the shoes feel tight, and I must loosen the laces as the progression invokes the ancestors into celebration, bursting the heavens into song of rejoicing that I am no longer following but assuming the lead. Between family, work, friends and foes, my path strengthens my resolve and rays of wisdom show me that my journey is not mine alone but made to invest in others. My open hand of charity, love, compassion and care I interpreted as clarity of mind as I lead. Again, I feel the tightness of the shoes and realize that there is no longer a need for the thick socks as my feet now fill the shoes and I have learned lessons to take the lead. I enjoy the moment of acceptance, the shoes fit, yet time has run out and I look to the next two generations to try on the shoes. Their obstacles should be less, as my lessons will keep them blessed. My role changes, and I'm no longer a walker in the shoes, but a minder of the shoes. I must give direction on how I walked in the shoes. I pass on the experience and keep the lectures within reach of those to whom I preach. The laces relaxed, the socks removed. I now have nothing more to prove accept a legacy to make those in the shoes choose the right, it will be okay. That was a beautiful poem. And for me to add anything else would spoil that beautiful moment. And just like a good lawyer, I will never give up the opportunity not to say more than what is required. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we, you can sit over there. I think we, we, are, we are moving towards closure. Uh, is there anything? We still have a little disappeared. Okay, is there anything? Just last more, then we can... I swear you get ready, eh? Last quote, no one has any idea of your capabilities of what you might ultimately do or become. Perhaps the hardest thing to do in life is to accept how extraordinary you really can be until you incorporate an awareness of knowledge into action. Don't forget to always check your attitude.
This is what I would like my children to learn, that life is not always easy, that we learn to live to our best level for doing through hardship. No person is mentally or emotion emotionally incapable to build up confidence from within. In fact, we each have untapped potential from within that can deliver us to greatness. Mm. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, those words, the three um, colleagues, no, they, they've been reading is the words that I wrote, the words that came to my mind uh, when, I was, when I'm sitting alone and decided to translate them into a book. So those were extracts from the book, but I want to invite the advocate to close it because once the lawyer has spoken, nothing else. Um, advocate, can you close the session for us in the form of a vote of thanks? Yes, thank you. This is too important a job to do sitting down. And it's most probably the most difficult part of it all. And that is to, to thank everyone. And I'm going to start with our hosts. Jackson Isuzu, thank you for rolling out the red carpet for us tonight. It's a beautiful venue, beautiful facilities, and the, the reception and hospitality is exceptional. Let's give them a round of applause. And the following people I'm going to thank I'm not doing so in any order of importance, please. Empor Publishers, I single you out because you took on the task, as I said earlier on, to take on this giant for the second time. Thank you. And to add to that, for coming all the way from Polokwane, to our beautiful Eastern Cape. Welcome and thank you. Our esteemed guests and panelists sitting on the couch, thank you for your wise words, for taking the time to come out here to grace us with your presence. We really appreciate it. With winter setting in, you would much rather have been at home with your families catching up on the news on the Ukraine and the coronavirus, but you chose to spend it with us. Thank you. The SG of the Fort Hare Convocation. By the way, that's a beautiful dress. It looks good on you. Thank you for your wise words and for gracing us with your radiance. Friends, family, colleagues from near and far who took the time out to come and sit with us here through power failures. We won't call it load shedding because it was not that. But uh, you could have been at home in your warm houses with your families. Thank you for coming out. We truly appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Give yourselves a round of applause. To all those whom I have not mentioned by name, it is not intentional, but you played a very special part here today, especially to those family members and friends and colleagues who would have loved to be here, but for some reason could not make it. We, we appreciate the support. We feel you in your absence. We know that you are here in spirit. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all of you once again. Thank you so much. Anita, if you can come forward and close now. We come close. You open with prayer. Uh, thank you very much. What will happen as well, I'm um, advised, is that there is a, a refreshment, a snacks, and we can still socialize probably half more, one more, no, not one more, 30 more minutes. And then we also... Those who bought books uh, can also gladly come near. I will be sitting, I will check where, but I think, yeah, 
and then I'll sign them. See, for, uh, uh, not everyone must uh, can sign the books, you understand? So it's another level, but here I will sign the books for everyone here. Yeah? And there's also an opportunity that you can have a picture with me. I'll sign, you buy, I sign, we have a picture. So, so, so it's a combo. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, leadership, yes. Leadership, I think, let me also ac acknowledge you, uh, leadership. I, councillors at the back and front, uh, but the advocate has spoken. Thank you so much, Anita. Let's close our eyes. Engosu Somandla, Ngalemini, and Amishanji, Osnede Kakulu, Ungutiko Bona Kalayu, Ezindu Enezong, a bless us, Sisa Kutu Gangosi, protect us, Sisa Ambin Lelini, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.